Hey folks, I had a couple minutes free today, Saturday, September 26th. Uh, I wanted to make a quick little video showing you a couple things about pentatonic patterns. It's a really simple concept, uh, but very powerful once you get the hang of it. I call them uppers and downers, and you can do this in any pentatonic position if it's one position on the fretboard, not the kind of diagonal position that I also use and I also teach. But if it's one position, like we're in E minor pentatonic at the 12th fret, one position that's got two notes on every string, we can use this concept of uppers and downers. So I'll explain the concept, just the concept by itself first as it applies right here, and then I'll show you where else you can use it around the fretboard. So uppers, I think of as going on each string, going up. Every time you go to a new string, you do the low note, then a high note. And I always, I always go down up when I go to a new string when I'm doing this particular exercise. The new string is going down, up, whichever way I go. Down, up, down, up. So doing it like this sort of separates out all the notes string by string. So I'm not coming down through the scale like this, not strictly descending. I'm descending through the scale like this. So the notes are kind of staggered on each other as we come back down through the scale. So the exercise, as I like to do it, kind of zigzags through the strings on the way up and on the way down. So we get this. I'll play it slowly and then you can, uh, you can sort of see the pattern that I'm doing. Three strings in a row and then three strings in a row. So that's the ascending pattern. Three strings in a row and then you back up a string. Three in a row and then you back up three in a row. Let me do the ascending one more time. The descending pattern is the same thing, but as long as we're doing uppers, then every string has to be the low note, then the high note. So this is what the descending is going to be. We come down through three strings, then we back up and come down through three strings again. Now the whole thing, put it all together. So kind of cool little pattern and it's not so predictable as you know doing something like like going up and down through little segments of the scale um, because you're always kind of looping back on yourself and it's never really predictably going straight up or straight down but what's really nice about this is in both hands it's very predictable you're always going left right left right left right left right left right on your left hand the left note and then the right note no matter which string you're moving to and the right hand is always going down up on each string down up and then change strings down up change strings so with your hands it's very predictable but sound wise it's not so predictable so that's why i think it's a pretty cool pattern so when we inverse it and we do downers we get this three strings in a row and then you back up and then going back in the in the ascending direction Same thing, three strings in a row and then you back up on yourself. So we can use this in a few different ways. We can uh, just take that pattern that I just did, put a metronome on it, and the metronome, here I'll get my tambourine metronome out so I can show you the different ways you can feel it. You can feel it like this. Um, uh, So that's 16th notes. We could also do it in sextuplets, so, uh, something like this. And that way, I kind of like that one better, but it depends on the context. Um, 
because as we go through back and forth and back and forth it offsets itself and it's a different emphasized note every time um, the other th the other thing that we can do with it is we can play some of those notes uh, out of out of time or out of the strict flow of 16th notes and we can do like a a sprint of a few notes in a row and then stop and a sprint of a few notes in a row and then stop something like this something like that and that way we can get a sprint that's quite a bit faster than we could do the whole thing and you can get these little collections of notes that um, that sound rhythmically more interesting and, uh, mm -hmm. and still give you the kind of fast feel of this pattern. So now, expanding on the rest of the fretboard, we can do this in all of the other pentatonic positions. So if I just go through the, the different positions in E minor pentatonic, so that one was up here at the 12th fret. If I go down the fretboard to 10th fret position, uh, 9th and 10th fret position between frets 9 and 12, we get this for uppers. Oops. And downers would give us this. come down one more position to seventh position uppers downers I don't know what happened there got an interesting note in there Sometimes when I land on a mistake like that and it's just an interesting note, I might try to uh, do it on purpose. So instead of getting those two notes, I got these two, and that lays pretty easily. So maybe I try to incorporate that in the lick in the future. Never done that before. Next position could be played here. Uh, or in this key, it lays a little bit easier way up here in the fretboard. We don't have to stretch so far to get those other notes. Uppers. And downers. And one more position, uppers. Downers. So that's all five different pentatonic shapes. Uh, different different keys will give you different challenges based on where they are on the fretboard. Like that last one that I did up here is very nice in the key of E minor up here, but in this key, if we're trying to do it down here. Quite a bit stretchier. You've got to use your pinky more, and the shape of it and the whole feel of that position is very different down here. Okay, that's all I got for you today. Good luck. <laughs>